Hello everyone. I have missed you. It has been so long since I last posted a video on YouTube or on any social media for that matter. And I wanted to give you a life update as well as share with you some really exciting fragrance news. Towards the end of last November, one of my family members, my uncle and also my godfather, who's someone that I'm really close to, was rushed to the hospital. He was really sick and sadly, he passed away before Christmas. So you can imagine that that entire time period was an incredibly stressful and highly emotional one and I just could not bring myself to film and show up in a positive bubbly way when from an emotional standpoint, I was completely drained and not knowing what to do. And I'm sharing this with you because first of all, I want you to know where I've been and that I haven't just disappeared for no reason. There was a very good reason why I wasn't on social media. And also I wanna share with you a story around fragrance and why perfume plays such an integral role, integral part of our lives every day. So whilst all of this was happening, whilst I found out that my uncle was in a coma and I wasn't in Geneva because I'm based in London. <laughs> I was in London away from my family members and I can't explain to you, but I had the urge to wear a particular scent. It was a fragrance that I had discovered a few days before at a perfume event that I thought was nice, but not anything spectacular. But for some reason, I needed to wear this perfume. It is Per Se from 2787. And I never felt this way about a perfume before where I had the urge to spray it on me for comfort. This perfume gave me the warm hug, the big hug that I needed whilst I was away from my family. And when I went back to Geneva, I also wore this perfume every single day because it just brought that comfort to me. So this is to say that fragrance is not just about seduction, about compliments. It's really an integral and very important part of day-to-day -day life. It captures specific memories, whether they're good or if you're in need of comfort, scent can be a great way to get that. I wanted to share this story with you because I view fragrance in a holistic way as an integral part of my life, whether it be going on holiday and associating a specific scent with that place. I often buy fragrances so that I remember my holidays through scent, or if you are in need of comfort or you wanna mark and remember a happy moment, such as a wedding, a christening, whatever it may be, fragrance is that powerful. This next part of the video I filmed way back, so let's rewind a little bit to when I was invited by Coty to discover such a cool fragrance launch, as well as a little trip to Paris. This is the most revolutionary new perfume launch since the birth of modern perfumery. And that was over a hundred years ago. Infiniment Coty Paris. So let's rewind a little bit back to 1904, the birth of modern perfumery, thanks to François Coty. With the creation of the first soliflore fragrance called La Rose Jacqueminot, which was a rose fragrance that included naturals, but also synthetic ingredients. It was the first time that a fragrance incorporated naturals and synthetics into a perfume. Taking that heritage, bringing it forward into the future to today, what does that look like? You get Infiniment Coty Paris, a new collection of 14 fragrances under the Coty namesake brand, Infiniment Coty Paris. I was lucky enough to be invited to the global press launch, which was at Somerset House in London. The Coty US team flew in, the Paris team was here, London, they flew in journalists. I mean, it was a really big and important affair. There was even the CEO of Coty herself, Sue Nabi, that was introducing the collection, the most powerful woman in the beauty industry. She is, I believe, the only female CEO of a multi-million, billion dollar beauty business. Anyway, 
Anyways, this event was a fully immersive one and we were greeted by a dance that represented one of the perfumes, truly a celebration of art. And that is key here. The key word is art because Koti partnered with the 154 Contemporary African Art Fair to promote African artists. And the way that they did that is that they collaborated with five young African artists to create artworks based on five of the perfumes in the collection. And the artworks are beautiful, vibrant, and so creative. We entered into this room filled with beautiful art, and then we could discover the fragrance collection itself. Had these giant flower pods where you would approach your nose into this giant flower and the scent of the perfume was diffused. It was such an experience. The collection is spectacular. Beautiful florals, gourmands, musks, chypre, woods. There is a fragrance for everyone. I haven't smelt any fragrances like this before. My favorite one is a vanilla one and I couldn't speak about it on my channel yet and I can't show you the fragrance because first of all the collection hasn't launched yet. It's due to launch in 2024 but also the packaging or the bottle is under embargo at the moment so I can't even show you the physical product. However, what I will say is that this is my favorite vanilla scent. I love baby cat but this vanilla scent is the next best thing for me. And when I first smelt it, I remember in this giant flower pot, I kept on going back to it and putting my face into the flower because I loved the fragrance. And then I saw the name of the perfume and it is called Encore Une Fois, which means once more. So it's literally that. It's like you want to smell the fragrance over and over and over again. So that was, that was um, quite interesting to experience. So whilst we were smelling the fragrances, we were immersed by this beautiful physical art, but then there was also also moving art with dance performances. So what makes this collection so special? It's the fusion of science or technology and art with the pioneering know-how of Koti. So let's talk about the science piece first because that's what I'm really excited about. The perfumes are formulated with 100% upcycled alcohol, which is an industry first. It means that they are taking the CO2 or carbon dioxide emissions from the beauty and fragrance industry, transforming that into alcohol and then are purifying that alcohol to be used into their fragrances. So that's one component of the perfume. You of course have purified water, then there's the perfume oil, and there is a special molecule that is found by Coty, developed by Coty, and that has a patent pending, a game changer in the industry. As soon as I can show you what the fragrances look like and the bottle, best believe that I will because it really is a cool project. A few days after this, I went to Paris on a scented adventure and started off at Jovois. I'm about to go smell some new fragrances in Jovois, which has an incredible selection. More brands versus in London. So I can't wait to discover them, get some samples, because you guys know how obsessed I am with the sampling service from Jovois. So I, yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. Sniff around, try new perfumes. The Paris boutique has such a large collection of brands, way more than in London. Went straight to the new perfumes corner. Famine Bravi Stunning Nutty Honey Scent. Elaka Muskoka, which smells so close to Glossier U. Cherry Punk Extra de Parfum, what Tom Ford Lost Cherry should have been. And then Sense of Wood. Have you guys tried this brand? Like, what do you think? Niche perfumes can be expensive very quickly, but I found a little corner where the fragrances are between 75 to 60. 60 euros, which is incredible. The two brands I'm testing are Majuri and also Maison Martin. I mean, look at how pretty the packaging is. Is it just me or have fragrances become so much more expensive than they used to be? Also checking out Bon Parfumeur as a more affordable brand. So I'm obsessed. I found so many new fragrances. This is my current sample list. And I always say this, sample fragrances before you buy, test them on your skin, see how it wears in different situations, which is why I love to shop at Jouvois. This isn't sponsored by the way, but I can get samples of all these fragrances really expensive niche ones but at an affordable price. So the lovely in-store staff will make samples for you then and there in the boutique of any perfume you want to try. You will not believe that all of the samples that I received were complimentary. In London you have to pay for them but in Paris they're completely free and I literally tried the entire store. 
I was so embarrassed because I was ready to pay a little fortune for the samples like I do in the London store but here they were complimentary and I literally tried the whole boutique so if you are based in Paris and you want complimentary samples of any niche fragrance that you can think of that is found in Jovois, then I invite you to go into that store. End of the day with some yum sushi rolls, got ready for bed, and my current read is this book from Stephen Hawking. Anyways, the next day I was invited to a presentation by Givaudan, and for those of you who don't know who Givaudan is, they are the leading fragrance and flavor manufacturer. So when it comes to scents, they create anything from personal fragrance to shower gel, deodorant, fabric softener, candles, whatever it may be, they do it all. And so as part of their job, they also look at different trends and find creative concepts to inspire their clients. And their clients being large designer brands or smaller niche brands. And so this presentation was all about exploring the codes of love and seduction around perfume as they relate to Gen Z. So love, seduction, and fragrance has always been a common theme, but it has evolved quite a bit. So what they did is a lot of social listening on TikTok interviewed Gen Z to understand what is their love language, their codes, and how do you translate that into fragrances. The brief that they gave to their perfumers was to create fragrances like Gen Z creates TikToks. A sort of defiltered, olfactive authenticity. So unfiltered, authentic, and spontaneous fragrances. And by the way, these fragrances were tested with Gen Z in a type of olfactive Tinder where they would smell fragrances, have a little iPad and then swipe, what is it, right, left, I don't know, I don't know how to use Tinder, but they would swipe based on what they liked and what they didn't like. And so these perfumes that they developed, they know that Gen Z really enjoys. So the tour began going through this selfie ring light corridor and we watched some snippets of Gen Z explaining what love means to them. L'amour pour moi, c'est beaucoup de partage, de soutien, de confiance. And what those fragrances evoke for them through images and quotes. The fragrances were really interesting. There was a peach one that was contrasted with like an animal, a leathery note. There was a violet one, a clean musk one. Then we proceeded to move into watching an olfactive film, which was around young love, two people, discovering each other and all the stages into young love. And throughout these stages, we could smell four perfumes. The first one was rum with bubble gum. Things start to heat up a little bit. And here we smell an interesting fragrance with, that was like a blend of a banana milkshake with cannabis. So really contrasting notes, very creative. One that was more like latex-like and there was another one that was clean. So quite a variety of olfactive profiles. We then moved up to the teen room which was my favorite one I wish my teenager room looked like that and here we experienced the fragrances on sweatshirts each of the sweatshirts was infused with a different scent this one smells like an almond milk latte it's delicious this one smells like a milky tube rose with saffron I love it this one has a mix of lavender and Japanese calligraphy ink so creative. What's quite interesting with Gen Z is that they're really open with their emotions and sharing their feelings, especially in the online world, exploring that emotional roller coaster of emotion as it relates to love in the form of tears and translated into perfumes. A bar with olfactive tears. Some of these fragrances had more of a metallic note, others were a little bit fresher, some were a little bit minty or zesty. And the final area that we explored was really the fun, playful room. I mean, there was mirrors everywhere, emojis, stickers, lots of colorful things, and the blotters are adorable. Yes, this is a Tinder-themed blotter, and here the perfumes were super fun. They were exploring notes of banana, of those candied fruit bracelets. My favorite one was a popcorn floral notes. So that perfume was inspired by an open air cinema. You're in your car, you're eating popcorn under the magnolia trees. It was beautiful. So it was a really interesting experience to explore such a creative approach of perfumery and see how big fragrance manufacturers like Givaudan work with their clients and how they push the boundaries of perfumery. Right guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for sticking around, for always being so supporting and patient with me. I will be resuming regular content across all social media platforms. 
YouTube, TikTok, Instagram. You'll be seeing me a lot this year. I am back, I'm here to stay, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.